to do all of the compliance work, to assist with the audit, to do all of the matching of transactions, and to basically ensure that your SMSF is compliant with all of the rules and laws. Hey, this is Chris. In this video, I'm going to be sharing my tips on picking a great self-managed super fund or SMSF administrator. Um, what is an SMSF administrator? Well, it's the party that you work with annually when you have an SMSF to do all of the compliance work, to assist with the audit, to do all of the matching of transactions and to basically ensure that your SMSF is compliant with all of the rules and laws. Um, there's all sorts of different providers out there. I'm going to be focusing on what they are and, and how you can select which one's right for you. And, and the first factor to really consider is the complexity of your investments. You know, in a very simple sense, if you don't have a lot of um, very unusual investments in your SMSF and you're focused on shares, ETFs, uh, managed funds, it could be term deposits and cash, then you know a simple SMSF administrator is possibly right for you. There are a lot of online providers or digital type providers that they also aren't providing an advisor or an accountant um, in addition to these. Um, they tend to be lower cost somewhere between one to $3,000 per year is normal. Um, and if you have simple investments, um, for most people, that's a great option. On the other side, if you have more complicated investments, um, if you own cryptocurrency, or if you own a lot of investment properties, or if you own art or a wine collection or something like that in your SMSF, you might need a higher touch service and those um, providers may not be appropriate for you. Um, you'll need to check the T's and C's, but a lot of them limit the types of investments you can use. So you may need to speak to a more traditional accountant or advisor to assist with your SMSF. And so, first of all, understand the complexity, not only what you have today, but what you're looking for in the future, because you want to have this partnership for more than just a year or two, because it's quite cumbersome switching between providers. I'd be planning probably for the next five or 10 years. And if you do see a simple SMSF getting more complex, start to plan for that complexity a few years in advance. Um, so that's the first factor. The second is how much you want to pay. Part of that is driven by the complexity, but the spectrum of SMSF admin costs really vary quite a lot from what I've seen. Um, from the low cost side of things at around $1,000 to two or $3,000, um, all the way to a very high touch SMSF um, service where you have a accountant and advisor working with you and there's a lot of complex work to do that might be five or $10,000 per year. Um, but how much you wanna pay will also be an important factor to consider. Um, the next one is turnaround time. So again, related to the first two, if you want someone that can call you every day and that's on dial, you're probably gonna to have to pay a bit more and go with a more traditional advisor and accountant. Whereas if it's not something that's important, you're happy for your SMSF admin to get done just a few times a year for the matching to happen and for you to sign the documents and do the compliance work once a year. Those more simple online services um, are, are probably gonna be right for you in those circumstances. Um, another question to think about is where is the compliance work getting done? So I know a lot of people these days are, are very sensitive to sharing financial information with anyone, let alone sharing information overseas. And what we know is some SMSF administrators are very vocal about keeping the work locally in Australia so that data isn't shared into other jurisdictions, whereas others are more comfortable sharing um, the data of SMSF um, you know, SMSFs and their trustees into other countries where the SMSF work don't, might be able to be done more cheaply. It's a good question to ask your SMSF administrator, where is the work getting done? Um, in what countries? How is that data getting shared? And if it is being shared overseas, you know, what rules and regulations are being followed and what are the company's processes and procedures to ensure the safety of financial data um, when that's happening? Um, so that's an important one. It links to another one, which is um, your relationship um, with the person, you know, do you want a relationship with the person managing your SMSF or not? If it's important, then obviously the higher touch ad admin providers are important, like an accountant or advisor. Whereas if you don't want to have a relationship with them, you know, that's not so important. Um, any limitations of what you can invest in is another consideration. Some SMSF administrators are quite prescriptive about what are the types of investments they'll allow, whereas others are more flexible. So definitely check that out before you make a decision and make sure that all of the investments that you're planning to make are able to be accounted for and that they don't impose much higher costs for those types of investments, if that's important. Um, the final couple, I think, are more around the actual business themselves. What I've noticed is a lot of SMSF administrators not only do the admin, but they're manufacturing financial products or um, earning commissions from financial products that they're selling. And that's how they ultimately subsidize the SMSF admin cost. Um, you know, in my view, 
This isn't always very transparent and you might think that you're getting a great deal on the SMSF admin itself, but actually not realize that you're overpaying for brokerage or not earning as much um, um, on interest in your cash account as you could be because you're paying away a lot of margin on those things. So I think it's important to ask your provider, where do you earn your money? Is it just from the admin fee I'm paying you or are you earning money from some of the financial products you're selling? Um, those financial products could be indirectly through commissions or it could be the same business that owns both the administrator and the funds management business or the wealth management business that then is trying to cross sell that business into you as well. So understanding their relationship with other financial products is pretty critical just so you know where you stand and you understand any conflicts that you could be walking into. Um, ultimately, it could be a decision that you make that you're comfortable with those conflicts, but it's at least important to be aware of them. Um, and then the final question I'd be asking is what's the backing of the business? Who is it owned by? How well capitalized is it? How long have you been around? How many SMSFs are you administering? You know, this will give you a good sense of whether this administrator is around for the long run or whether there are two Bob shop type administrator, which I do get a lot of flyers in the mail from at home these days. Um, you know, A4 flyers saying, if you want your SMSF and administration done, come to us, but I've never heard of the company before. So I think doing a bit of due diligence on the company itself will give you the confidence that it's gonna be a long-term relationship. You can trust them with your data. You can trust them with your information and it's not going to cause a lot of hassle and upheaval when you have to move from one provider to the next. And they're the tips I would be sharing with anyone considering different SMSF administrators uh, for their investments.